Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 384. Uh, let's see, my opponent was with the white pieces kicked off with e4, and uh, I play the Sicilian, and I'm just playing the normal stuff, d4, taking, and then he takes with the queen. Bit of a rare move, although you see it is, uh, it is in the books. It's the second choice instead of knight takes d4. And uh, the reason why it's a bit rare is that the knight, or the queen, the queen gets kicked around there. Now, if you play the immediate knight c6, um, white responds with the pin. You can see, actually, that's the top choice in the opening book. Um, but I think it's a little better to play this move a6 first, the second choice there, just preventing that pin. And uh, now what white can do is white can set up a uh, Meroxy bind here with c4, but you're going to get a tempo against the queen with your knight and uh, should be a pretty decent position. So, um, but my opponent played bishop e3, the second choice, so I continue developing, take the, bring, <clears throat> bring the knight up, queen to back to d2, had to go somewhere, and then g6. It looks like g6 is an okay move, knight f6 and bishop g4 are reasonable alternatives, so, um, but this is an okay position. I can um, look at this in the notation tab. And white still keeps some some opening advantage. You can't. It's, it's not like black is totally equalized, but uh, I think it is pretty comfortable for black as well. So knight c3, bishop g7. We just get some normal developing moves. Just put them on the board. Knight f6, bishop h6. So um, up until this point, um, the uh, white player has kept the opening advantage. Starting with bishop h6, it kind of goes downhill. The engine really doesn't like this plan of trading off the dark squared bishop. Although it's a very typical plan in these Sicilians because uh, in the long run this, this bishop can become strong in this diagonal. Um, depends on which way he wants to castle to, but if he's planning to castle queenside, which he does in a few moves, it makes sense to get rid of this bishop, but the engine it doesn't approve. It thinks uh, white should continue on with uh, knight d5 or um, h3. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so bishop h6 though, and now uh, the position is about equal to maybe a little better for black. And this um, attack on the king side is not really going anywhere. It looks like uh, the engine thinks I can safely ignore it. Uh, that's tough to do in a blitz game, especially in a, in a slow time control game. You might have some time to think about it. I mean, <clears throat> the point is I have this good square for the bishop, bishop g4, where it actually protects um, the h the h5 square along with the knight. So it makes it really hard for these pawns to come forward and his knight is blocking the uh, f pawn. So looks like I could just, uh, with bishop g4, set up a nice blockade on his uh, attempt to attack my king. Whereas the move h5, which I made in the game, it, it uh, creates some weaknesses in my position. So about an even game here. And um, we stay in the range of even for quite a while. I, I, uh, this, this advanced uh, knight sortie here maybe is not the best choice. Well, once again, bishop g4 looks like a good move. Yeah, this looks like a good diagonal for the bishop. Bishop g4, queen b6, bring the queen out. Uh, queen b6, I think, is a very typical idea in these Sicilians. Putting the queen, uh, <clears throat> looking at the opponent's king, although uh, it's always hard to say whether you should play that before or after you advance the pawns. Um, putting it in front of the pawns may be, um, may be an issue. It's also looking at the, the f-pawn over here. Get rid of some of these other arrows. So yeah, queen b6 is looking at a couple of targets over on white's position. So interesting way to play. Okay, I went knight b4. Maybe a bit premature. So e5, he plunged on. Did he have a better reaction there? Bishop e2. Just retreating this bishop so I can't trade it off. And, uh, and white is fine. So this uh, advance of the pawn, it's uh, opening up the D file, but it's not clear that uh, White has any great um, tactic on the um, on the D file at the moment. He does have a battery, but even if this bishop goes away, my queen is well enough defended that he's not losing any material. But he did open up the the D file with that, and I got the queen off of here because I have ideas of bringing a rook over. And now, uh, yeah, the engine is starting to like Black's position a little bit. Let's see, he played knight to c4, harassing my queen. I just dropped the queen back to c7. A little dance with the pieces. The knight goes to e3. And um, I bring the rook to the d file. I chose to bring the f rook out. And he plays a3 to kick my knight. And I finally decide to take the bishop. And uh, yeah, at this point, 
<clears throat> I'm starting to feel pretty good about my position, and the engine confirms it's good. Um, you know, when I take the knight, he really has to take back with the pawn because it's, I can't take with the queen and um, lose his material. And um, so now he's got this kind of fractured pawn structure around his king, and um, I have good winning chances here. Should probably, uh, with best play, I should go on to win this game. Um, but the game is not over yet. So I played rook d7, planning to uh, double on the d file. And he goes uh, d4. And then I went uh, bishop to b3. Okay, yeah, poking at, uh, you know, he's got these light squared weaknesses around his king. And um, putting putting the bishop there and uh, with some ideas, maybe busting up the pawn structure around his king. And this, this uh, bishop also prevents these pawns from advancing. So he went uh, rook to c1, setting up a veiled threat against my queen. So I put the queen over on d6, and now he plays uh, g4, trying to get something going against my king. But this is uh, just a bit premature. I could take either pawn. I could take the g-pawn or the d-pawn I chose to take here. Well, maybe premature isn't the right word. It's just um, it's, the attack is just not working. He's not able to break open any lines here, really. And he sacrifices the pawn. So he doesn't uh, get enough material in exchange for the pawn. And um, so now I've got a winning edge. I've won a pawn, and, and I have the better position. I have a good bishop here confining his king. And, um, yeah, so like I said, I should just go on to win this game. <laughs> uh, but uh, And in these moves, uh, I keep an edge here. So let's get to the point where I, I get in a bit of trouble. Rook h4 is still okay. Right here would be a good time to throw in the move bishop f5 check. I didn't see this idea. Um, actually, the idea is not so much the check. The idea is to move the bishop with tempo to get it off of this square, because now that I've placed my king on um, h7 here and the bishop here, my opponent has this knight fork here check. And it doesn't win material, but it messes up my pawns around the king and makes my task a lot more difficult. And I can't really stop it with a move like, uh, well, I, I guess that would work too. Rook, rook to um, g4 to... Uh, no, no, he could still play the check, couldn't he? Yeah, rook to g4 doesn't help. Knight g5 check anyway. So really I need to move that uh, bishop to, to maintain the best position here. Um, instead I moved the rook. Well, the rook was under attack, but uh, the point was the bishop could be moved with tempo and then I could move the rook. Went to uh, c4, and then he played this check. And so now I still have an advantage, but uh, it's starting to decrease, and it's getting a little more tricky to uh, defend this position. So he pushed on with b3, chasing my rook away. I drop back to c6, defending my uh, loose pawns along the uh, sixth rank here. Knight e4. So just getting his pieces active, this is good. I decide to trade off one pair of rooks. And, um, well, that's interesting. So the engine recommends rook a to c8, forcing uh, him to trade or move his rook away, I guess. I was thinking... Um, yeah, yeah, the engine is not suggesting trades at all. Rook a, c8, and then b4, leaving the uh, standoff. Hmm. Oh, eventually, after a few moves, rook takes c6, rook takes c6. So maybe um, that's a good idea. I guess uh, when I take first, um, he gets a rook on an active file, and I still have to... Uh, I, I've lost a tempo in a way. I have to find a... a it takes me a move to get this rook into the game. But uh, why well, do that immediately? But okay, so rook d8. It's not the best square. What is it, b5? Anyway, you see that uh, somehow in these last few moves, uh, black has, white, white has gotten back into the game in my advantage, has been shrinking. So it starts with that rook takes c1. Yeah, rook a c8 is a way to keep an advantage. Even with these fractured pawns, I should still be better. I mean, I, I do have two pawns, a two pawn advantage. So anyway, yeah, so the combination of the fractured pawns and this exchange here, uh, means that I'm in a little bit of trouble. He goes knight c5, just uh, attacking my pawns. I defend them. And um, yeah, it looks like, uh, okay, it looks like he didn't play the most accurate moves there. And uh, he lets me back into the game. So uh, it's interesting. Yeah, if I can mop up the pawns. Well, so let's show, let's see where that happens. So rook d8, the engine was thinking white is almost uh, equalized again. Knight c5. It's not the most accurate. He should have gone rook c7. Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. Glad I stopped. Activating his rook along the 7th rank. Attacking 
couple of pawns there. It looks like he can just uh, win a pawn right away because I can really only defend one of them. And um, he can even, uh, after I play king to f7, he can bring the knight in even. So this, this pawn is pretty much a goner here. Hmm. Okay, so that's his chance. And then um, after king f6, rookie one is a bit of a mistake too. Still uh, here, yeah, he can take the, the b pawn. Well, he gets that in a move or two anyway, but um, he attacked here first. And then um, here he could still take on b7. Now, now he attacks my king. So so he gave up on the opportunity of winning a b pawn. So that's, that's how I, he let me back into the game here. And uh, now he wins the b pawn. He goes back there and takes it, and but I get the f pawn in exchange, and these passed pawns should win for me. I've got three passed pawns, and he really only has one, and um, I'm going to start marching them. They should be closer because they don't have any anything in their way to slow them down. So knight c5, rook f3, attacking his pawns. Maybe that was a wasted move, but uh, now I start advancing my pawns. And uh, yeah, it's all looking good. This is completely winning here. <laughs> and uh, even this move. Okay, so maybe I was getting short on time. I sacrificed the exchange thinking that this pawn is just going to queen and I will win the game. And uh, I was tired of all those knight checks. It was getting difficult to uh, calculate all of them. <laughs> but uh, it's just a bad move. So king e4 is the move. Now that's that's a dangerous move to play. King e4. Let's take a look at this. Walking right into a knight check. Knight c2 check. King d3 going in this way. Hmm. Not afraid of the, the discovered attack. I guess you have to calculate this that there's no useful discovered attack that the knight has. There's nothing he can take. It's only eight squares he can go to, so you have to look at all of them and see if he can do anything. Huh. So that's the way to play this. Yeah. So. This was a bad decision, taking the knight, but still not losing. Still an edge to black here, but I have to be careful now. And uh, what's the way to play this? The way to play this is to push immediately. G2, and then rook e1, getting in front of it. I was a little bit afraid of uh, getting too far behind. And then it says e4. This is kind of interesting. And it's also the only move to uh, keep a winning advantage. So nothing else will do. No, it's time, no time for king moves. So let's see what the plan is. e4. He plays rook to g1. He's going to take that pawn. Knight f4 defends it. So I don't use the king to defend it. I use the knight. Now he starts pushing. He's got a clear path. And I start pushing my pawn. But uh, my pawns are closer. How, is it, how am I going to queen though? Now knight d3 check. Okay, so that was why, if we back up a little bit, in this position, it didn't suggest, um, the computer did not suggest playing b5, it suggested playing king c2 to get away from some of these checks. And then I can move my king up at this point. If he wastes a king move, I guess I can waste a king move. So king e4, then he pushes b5. I go to f3 now, pushes b6, and now king f2, the natural move to uh, chase the rook away, is not the right move. That's, uh, I keep thinking of other moves. What's the, the right move here is knight h3, chasing the rook away that way. So b7, <laughs> he's going to queen. This is a very tricky endgame. I'm winning, but it's very difficult. He queens first even, but he doesn't queen with check. And how do I get this? I go knight h3 and he can't stop me from queening or he has to sacrifice his queen to stop me from queening. Amazing. Queen h2 and g1. Okay, so that's a really difficult endgame. <laughs> so I guess it's no no surprise I made some mistakes here. So even though I am uh, still technically winning at this point, um, it's difficult to play. And the, the very first move I play, king f4 gives away the advantage. And after one or two more moves, g2, I play that one correctly, a4. And now knight g3, uh, you know, I want to come in and guard the queening square. Now uh, that's the last mistake, and now uh, white is just winning because his pawns are going to queen first. So that's how the rest of the game goes. So it's uh, kind of a shame I was winning most of that game. <laughs> and uh, played okay in the opening, got got up in the middle game, uh, went into a winning end game, and then I lost the end game. <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Pretty, pretty interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.